Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how you can upload your very own NPM package to NPM's public repository in just a few steps. Publishing your own packages is a great way to share your code with the rest of the developer world and showcase your talents. Maybe you have created your own React component library or a new set of emojis that you want the world to use. In the next few minutes, I will show you exactly how to achieve this. So let's get straight into it. So here we are on VS Code and let's start with a little bit of theory first. The NPM registry contains public packages that can be installed on any system that has NPM package manager installed on it. So a package must contain a package.json file in order to be published to the NPM registry. Now packages can be scoped or unscoped. Let me show you an example of what that means. So we'll go to the home page of the NPM js.com website here you can search for any of the public packages that are readily available on the npm registry if you just scroll a little bit down you'll see a list of recently updated packages so a package like manage client is an example of an unscored package but if you see the next package it has a prefix attached to it and this prefix is called the scope of the package but to keep things simple for a use case we will be creating an unscoped package as unscored packages are always public and can be easily referred to by just their package name. So our first step here should be to create our project directory and place our package.json file inside of it. So I'll use the command make directory and give the name of the directory as create user. Since we'll be creating a very basic JavaScript function which just prints hello user for our example package. Now we'll navigate inside our newly created directory by using the command change directory or cd create to user. Now if you're going to manage your package code by using git, it's recommended to initialize your git project by running git init and then by adding the remote origin URL of the repository where you're going to place your code inside. And for that you can just run the command git remote add origin and give the URL of your GitHub repository. Before we move ahead, let me clean the terminal. And now to finally create a package.json file inside of this directory, we need to run the npm init command. So npm gives you the init command which provides you with an interactive command line questionnaire using which you can follow the prompts to fill in the package details like the package name, its version, description and other information. So we'll run the command npm init and the first question that this questionnaire brings up is the package name. The default value is greet user and we'll leave it as it is. Since it's a new project, we'll keep the version as one itself. Next, you can give a simple description of a project. So I'll just type in a simple greet function. We'll keep the entry point of a project as index.js itself, which is a default value here. We'll leave the test command as an empty command and we'll also leave the git repository as empty. Now it's optional to give the author name but if you want people to know who created this project you can give your full name and your email inside this field. So I'll just leave my first name here and after all of the questions are done it will show me the sample package.json file that it's going to create. Now if everything seems correct to you just type in yes and you're done. Let's open this directory in a new VS code window by using code.command you'll notice that inside our read user directory a package.json file has been created now remember it is mandatory to have the name and version fields inside any package.json file the name field contains your package's name and it must be in lowercase and it should be a continuous word which might contain hyphens or underscores and when you're done uploading your npm package it's by this very name that you'll be able to search for your package online now the next most important field is the version field and it should always contain three numbers numbers divided by two dots which is the semantic versioning standard where the first number denotes your major version the second number denotes your minor version and the third number denotes your bug fix and since we have defined the entry point of our project as index.js let's go ahead and create our index.js file and here in this file we'll write the code of our package for our example we'll create a very simple utility function that greets a user by their name by taking their name as the input so we'll create a function by the name of greet which takes a single parameter by the name of name itself and then it returns a string value with the name parameter prefixed by the word hello now since this is the only function we'll be working with and the only function that we'll expose from our package, we'll mark this function as our default export from our index.js file by typing in module.exports and assigning it the function name greet. Now once we are done with it, it's considered a good practice to always include a readme file to explain what your package does and how the end user can use it. So let's go ahead and create a new readme.md file where we'll give the information regarding what the package does 
and how the end user can install it on their system. So once the package is uploaded to the public registry, all the end user has to do is run the command npm install and give the public package name, which in our case is greet user. Now before publishing our package to the public registry, let's open the terminal and make sure that we are logged in into our npm account. And if you do not have an npm account yet, please go ahead and create your npm account before publishing your package. Now to make sure I'm logged in inside the integrated terminal of VS code, I'll type the npm login command. Now the log of this command basically says that I have to first press enter to open the login form on the browser. So I'll click on enter and it's asking me to give the one time password that it has sent me on my registered email. I'll type in the OTP and then click on login. You'll get a message that your authentication was successful and you can now close this tab and return to your command line. So when we open VS code now, you'll notice the message logged in on NPM registry. Now once all of this is done, we are finally ready to publish our package. To publish your NPM package, all you have to do is run a simple command called NPM publish. So we'll go ahead and do just that and type in NPM publish on the terminal and hit on enter. We received an error message 403 forbidden here saying that the name of a package is very similar to an existing package greed user without the hyphen in it. So let's go ahead and rename our package to something else. I'll give the package name as simple greed user and try again. This time a publish command was successful and if everything was set up correctly, our package will be published to the NPM registry and be available for others to install and use. So let's go ahead and verify that our package was actually published to npm's public registry. So we'll go to npmjs.com and search for our package name by just appending the name of our package in the path name on the browser. We'll click on enter and as you can see our npm package was successfully published. Now since all of your code is publicly available, please ensure that you're not publishing any sensitive information to the registry as it can compromise your own development infrastructure and it can also put you at the risk of legal action. To ignore the files that you do not want to publish to the npm directory, you can simply create an npm ignore file and provide a list of all of the file paths that you want the publish command to ignore. Now since our package is available to the public, let's go ahead and test if we are actually able to install this package to any of our other projects. So in the terminal, I'll try to open a different project. Please make sure that the project where you're testing your npm package installation is also an npm project and has a package.json file inside of it. Here in the terminal, we'll type in the command npm install and give the name of our newly created package, simple greet user and hit on enter. And as you can see, a new node modules folder was created inside of which our public package was installed. The same can also be confirmed by looking at the package.json file, scrolling to the dependencies section and by seeing which version of our package was installed. Now to test a package, let's write some code. We'll first import the greet method from our npm package by typing in require and giving the name of a package. Now this greet method takes in a single parameter as input and we'll give some dummy name, let's say John and save the file. To execute the file, we'll use the node environment and on the CLI type in node followed by the name of our test file, which is test.js and hit on enter. But we did not see anything on the console and that was because our function is returning a string value and not logging it on the terminal. So to log our result, we'll simply wrap our function call within a console.log and then run the test file again. And this time you can see that we are getting the message hello john on the terminal. Now the last thing that I want to mention here is that if you go back to the code of the original package and try to publish the package again, you'll be again hit with the 403 error. Now this time this error happened because the package already exists with a certain fixed version. If you want to make some changes and re-upload your code to the npm's public repository, make sure that you also bump up the version of your package. So after increasing the package version, if you try to run the npm publish command again, you'll notice that this time the command goes through. And that was basically it. You successfully published your own npm package. Now other developers can use a package in their projects. If you found this video helpful, do not forget to like, share and subscribe for more such coding tutorials. And I'll see you guys in the next video.